In the House of Windsor, there's trouble about. So we sent Mark Phillips to sniff it out. Normally, as far as they can manage it, what happens in the palace stays in the palace. But the special 90th Queen's birthday issue of the High Society Town and Country magazine contains the spectacular revelation of a family rift of such vicious infighting that a psychologist had to be called in. A rift between the Queen's corgis, the dog breed she's famously fond of. A number of fights, um, fights which, between, between, the, between dog, the dogs. Let alone between the family, but between the dogs. <laughs> between the dogs. Pet psychologist Roger Mugford calmed the corgis down by sorting out the hierarchy, a lot like the way the royals work. And he discovered a possible reason for the doggy discord. The corgis were at each other's throats at the same time as the royal family were at each other's throats over the breakdown of Princess Diana and Prince Charles's marriage. Particularly when you're distracted by the affairs of state and and other things going on within the family, as they were at that time, the Princess Diana situation. The royal dog's life does seem a lot like the royal family's life, pampered, and they eat off good crockery. And the bowls are leftovers from the palace kitchens, I presume. You know, a, a battered silver dish here and a silver a, a, dish. and a cracked piece of porcelain there. Mother, daughter. And there's another way the royal corgis are like the royal family. The royal line of people are all direct descendants of a single person, Queen Victoria. And the royal line of corgis are all direct descendants of a single top dog as well. At the palace, in dogs and in people, it seems, breeding counts. Mark Phillips, CBS News, London.